Uh-huh. All right, guys, welcome. I think we're live. I think it should be working fine. And I'm not sure, and I really apologize, I'm not sure how good the quality is going to be today with the internet in Samrit. should be good, but cannot be like top notch for sure. But we'll do whatever we can for to, to make this better. If you guys want to give a like to the video, also that could be really, really good. And I hear myself sometimes. So yeah, give a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, just comment in the chat. We are with, with Mandy today again. So Mandy, what's going on in the uh, middle? Just getting my um, cable just in case. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I disappeared for a moment there. Um, yeah, it's um, 30 degrees and Australian Open. It's exciting times. It's the time of the year that I love the most in, in Australia because there is so much going on. There is, um, you know, the, the Aussie Open, the... Um, um, the Formula One is going to start soon. So we have a lot of overseas visitors and, nice. um, and you know, a lot of basking in the streets. And I have so much respect for those guys. Do you have that as well in Montreal, um, Etienne, like those baskers who sing in the streets and do performances? Yeah, sometimes in the summer, but not all the time. Yeah? Uh, it's really, it's a big thing here in Australia. Yeah. Uh, well especially in Melbourne. I don't know so much about the other cities, but they pretty much they have to get a pass to be allowed to be on the street. So it's, it's quite regulated. And of course, you know, um, the councils make sure that they um, um, make good profits from them. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you see like um, young kids, you know, 15 um, singing or playing an instrument. And I learned that they train themselves on the streets to um, to to improve their um, their skill, right? So, also I don't know if you remember David Copperfield, or if, um, he was one of the really famous magicians um, many years ago. <laughs> I think like twenty years ago. Or so, um, and he he ended up um, marrying a German German model. But um, so David Copperfield said he refined his um, skill by actually doing basking. He said that's the best feedback you can ever get being just out on the street and doing your thing and then people will be so honest and it hurts, right? That's how they're so honest it actually hurts. But that was what skyrocketed him to success because he took every piece of feedback and worked with it and that made him a better trader. So, a trader. <laughs> Magician. Yeah. We traders are like magicians sometimes, aren't we? So, but mm -hmm. kind of fear today in a couple of different topics. If you guys have any questions, as you said, comment in the chat. We'll make sure to answer all your questions. As always, as usual, welcome, Naga from Montreal. That's awesome. And TV Game, welcome. Uh, Gabriel says, Why are you starting to stream when he has to go to sleep all the time? So, <laughs> oh, where are you here. from, Gabriel? It's probably Europe, isn't it? Yeah, something That's similar. Probably, yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah, Etienne so, and I, we cool have thing about spoken this is that, about that, right? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Different times on stuff. Alejandro, welcome. Uh, yeah. And Indeed. MTV Game says, <laughs> you see the it's on his whole kitchen to play music on the streets, like with, with like whatever you want to play music with. Yeah, I've seen that before too. It's so cool. cool. Oh, so Gabriel, Italy. Yeah, that's good. Italy. We have a couple of students from Italy too. Yeah. Jim yeah. Too. That's what makes it hard. But yeah. Oh, I understand kind of Gabriel. Into... Because before you did that to me too, right? When you were in Montreal, I had to get up like seven o'clock on a Sunday morning to do our exactly. YouTube lives. <laughs> and now that you're in the same time yeah, zone, now... I can sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> now it's reverse. Now it's me who wakes up at like five a.m. to do these lives, which is which is fine. I like it. So it doesn't matter. Hmm. Oh, uh, and the game is coming across. The oh, so you've been reading a book from Kevin David? Yeah, that's a great book. Yeah, great one. And check out the podcast I did with him also. That's a good one. Um, cool. Welcome, LM Ta. Awesome. So South Africa, we have people. That's great. So I want to dive into the topic and we'll do the uh, citation a little bit after. But Mandy wants to talk about fear today. And what's the biggest fear in trading? So I'll, I'll let you rock with that, Mandy, and go to whatever direction you want to take this into. And I'll have, of course, question to follow up and uh, and give people a lot of value. So go ahead with that. Okay, well, it would be awesome if you guys give us feedback, ask questions, because I always say, I this is not Monday in a TV or 
I should be polite, sorry, Etienne and Mandy TV. Um, this is like for you guys to have the opportunity to ask questions and to interact with us and bring the best out within us because we have so much knowledge. We can talk for hours and days, but we might talk about topics and themes that are not suitable, not useful, not valid for you guys. So ask us your questions so we can give you directed targeted feedback. That's what these sessions are for. Now, um, as I said before, so Etienne and I, we have been speaking about um, covering the European time zones as well. So you guys don't need to um, stay up late or get up too early. Um, because the European group is, is growing, you know, so fast. It's unbelievable. And so we're going to cover the US, Canada, Canada time zone as well as the European one. And that's the advantage for me living in, in Australia, in, in Asia, because um, I, I'm like in the middle of both time zones. So I can accommodate for both of them. Whereas when you're in America or in Europe, it's kind of a bit tricky with the Asian time zone. So yeah. What I wanted to talk about is fear. And um, so I've been thinking a lot about what's going on at the moment with the Australian Open, with those baskers and um, people coming from overseas. Like I meet amazing people just on the tram or on the train who ask for directions. And then you get into a conversation and you hear like the most amazing stories, how people made it to come here. And I always thought that that was... Um, my, my strong belief that the biggest fear of us humans, which then um, plays out in trading, is not being lovable, being ostracized, not belonging, and basically dying alone and, you know, being rejected, all those fears. Because this is what you hear, right? When you hear about people talking about they are afraid of doing public speaking, it's always about the fear of rejection. Um, but Having worked with like, I don't know, thousands of traders by now over the last 10, 15 years, um, I, and, and also thinking about the Australian Open and the athletes and people actually being able to travel to Australia. And, you know, like you, Etienne, being able to travel around Asia, that's, that's not a given. Like, you're a privileged guy, but the privilege that you have is what you created. You know, even now you're on, on holidays, I know you're working so hard because you keep sending me those questions and it's like, hey, do you have this report ready? Come on, you know, I need to send that to my yeah. to my um, academy. It's like, okay, okay, <laughs> you know, you're just working add so... One, one more thing here, which is something I see all the time. So people say, like, they write to me, they say, oh, you should look like you've been traveling and stuff, you're going to this place and this place. But I've done, like, all the work and I've done, like, everything necessary to be able to travel. Like, when people say you're lucky or you've, like, just happens to you that that's 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 not gonna work that that's not possible you just have to put in the work and you have to do what's what's needed to be able to travel yeah exactly and and also why we work together you know i i'm really busy and i get requests from people to do joint ventures all the time and most of the time i say no not interested but the reason why i decided to work with etienne which was by the way not his request i approached etienne uh, because I love what he is doing and he was playing such a big game. And it's like, yeah, that's the kind of people I want to hang out with. Yeah. So, um, um, and, and so that says a lot about you, Etienne, as well. And now talking about the fears, I believe that the biggest fear for people is that they um, never achieve their potential. You know, that they never live a life fully lived simply because they didn't keep their words, simply because they didn't try to, the, to be the best all the time because of all the other fears that came before that. So traders, or I keep it general because it's really general. Um, it just plays out in trading so beautifully because it's instant feedback, whereas in other areas of life, it's not instant feedback. You know, um, the fear of not being loved, the fear of not being good enough, the fear of not having what it takes, the fear of success, because then we don't fit into our family um, dynamics anymore. All those fears are um, what what is the reason that we don't get to live life to the fullest. 
And that's why I believe that the biggest fear, the ultimate fear is waking up every morning and being disappointed in ourselves. Yeah. Waking up every morning knowing that we could have done better and waking up every morning knowing that we haven't kept our promises to ourselves. And that's why I always say, you know, where do you start? You start with giving yourself little challenges like I'm going to brush my teeth every night before I go to bed. No matter how late it is, no matter how tired I am, it's a two minute thing that I promise myself to do. And if you can't even keep the little promises, how on earth are you going to keep big promises like taking a loss when a loss is, you know, it's almost like a survival, our survival is challenged because um, deep in our um, neurology, deep in our DNA, money nowadays equals the, the prey that we needed to um, catch in order to feed the family, right? It's exactly the same thing. So losing money, unless you have an abundance of money already, does cause and trigger fears in people and very rightly so. Yeah. So I think that's a really good fear to have. Um, what I then see is often that this fear plays out in complete denial and anger and blame and victimhood and martyrhood. And, um, you know, I was working with someone recently and, and I said, so why are you not successful with your FX trading? Well, because my father, blah, and when I was little, my brother, blah. And it's like, wow, we don't use our story, our history to stop us succeeding. We use insights and understandings in our upbringing and the strategies that we have created to cope and um, the beliefs that we have created to survive childhood. Um, for some, it's really about survival. For others, not so. Um, to get insights on what's stopping us to become better and not stopping us to and using that as an example or a reason not to go out and be and do our best. And this is what I see most people do. So, yeah, that's what I think nowadays uh, yeah. with all. It's the fear yeah, of. Is... Yeah, go, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's it's the fear of never being able to live life to the fullest and missing out. Hence, that's the. Um, uh, midlife crisis that we talk about, yeah, that's that's a very valid thing yeah. where people go, wow, you know, I'm a certain age and and I suck, and then they start trying to succeed. Mm, yeah. Sorry, I and I didn't see the connection, but I see the connection now with the comment from a TV game that I kind of want to read for you guys who you listen to this, you cannot watch the the comment. He says, my biggest fear would be putting in the work, like all the work I'm supposed to do, and sticking to the plan without mistakes and still failing. So I don't know what you yeah. can do with that. Like that, that's a fear I also have personally. It's like doing everything needed in like any area, like whether it's going to be business or trading or whatever. And then you so know, I don't know how you can deal with this, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you talk on that. Yeah, that that's an amazing feedback. Thank you, NTV Game. Um, the and and I also see your comment. You can't even travel without much money. You know what? That's not the point. When I go traveling, I want to I want to experience the best. I want to have the choice. I want to be, um, you know, when I went to Peru, I was backpacking, trekking up to Machu Picchu and, you know, um, sleeping in a tent underneath the stars. That was like amazing. I love that. It doesn't need to be five-star hotel. But then when I came back um, and I was in Cusco, I was in a five-star hotel. I'm sorry, not Cusco, in... in um, Lima. Um, I was in a five-star hotel because I chose to. I want to have the choice and not being restricted. I want to be able to eat street food with the hawkers in Singapore, but also go to um, the Raffles Hotel and have a Singapore sling, right? I want to have the choice. That's the thing. Now, about the fear of doing everything that we can do and still not succeeding, everybody has that fear. It's it's a normal fear to have. And it's, I think, a good fear because it keeps you going. Um, because um, what I say to myself when I have that fear as well, right? Um, what am I going to do if it fails? That's It's a really valid thing. Exactly. Um, 
that's the reason why I don't trade Bitcoin because I can't gauge what I'm going to do if it if it fails. I, I don't know because I have no benchmark. Um, but if I'm going to fail, I'm going to find another way. I'm going to find another way because I have already benchmarks, already have examples of people who have done it. Um, Italy, Gabriel, I I know a trader far. I, I was very close to swearing here. I'm so lucky. Uh, I'm helping him on something not trading related. But this guy is amazing. He's a young guy um, um, who trades, who scalps the uh, euro stocks in the Italian market. Um, he makes, like I was, I was online with him trading live. Well, he was trading live. I was allowed to watch. He made 10,000 euros in a few hours. Just like that. And he built his account from 5,000 euros to 500,000 euros. Amazing guy. So I, can, I know I see it as possible. I see amazing traders all the time. This guy here in Australia, I'm, I'm not going to mention his name, um, trading small caps, makes about on average 100,000 a month. Complains to me, um, he makes 100, 150,000. He needs to break that level. He needs to get to the 200,000. He has the same fears like traders who make $50 losses a day. Same fear. It's like, why can't I breach that? What's wrong with me? Can you help me to overcome that? So you can see it's it's not the fear. It's, it's what you do with it. And But his mindset is like, I'm going to figure out what it is and how I can um, get over this. Um, limit this, this, you know, what, what it is that stops me from making 200,000 a month. I'm going to find a way. Whereas often you see traders who make $50 losses every day. They're all about what's wrong with me. I can't do it because my family blame, blah, blah, blah. So again, we use our story. We use our history as goal posts as light posts to show us where we need to work on, where we need to improve on, rather than using it as a reason why we can't succeed. Yeah. Going on a rent here and again. I think that, that, that's pretty much what I have answered as well. Like that, that's pretty much how I see it. So whenever I got like three strategies before having a success with one, it's still what's needed. So I'm still going to do it until I get to the point where I want to be. So I think if you adopt the mindset of just doing whatever you need to do to get to the point where you want to be, then it's like, you just, you don't care about the result, just care about the process. And when you get the result, then you're happy, but you've done everything needed before. So I, th and I think that's how it's see as well. You know, Etienne, it's also, I, I don't know if you guys follow the um, tennis, but uh, Maria Sharapova, who, who was like re leading, um, you know, the women's tennis, she was, she was up there. And then something happens that we have no influence over, that where we made a mistake leading up to it, that was in our blind spot that we that we took maybe too easy. So she was um, using medication, as she calls it, that was um, classified as performance enhancement. Um, and then she she didn't pick up on that, that the rules changed, she kept using it, and then she got picked up on it one month later and got banned for a, a year or so, you know, a few years. Okay. She she was beaten yesterday by uh, um by um by the German um tennis player, Angie forgot her name. But you can see how quickly your fall from grace can be. And and then what you do, you just keep working at it again because what was top in the game two years ago is not top in the game anymore life changes markets change tennis players change and you can see our markets changing so rapidly especially this weekend you know with the government shutdown it will be very interesting what's happening tomorrow um yeah yeah you see cool i think one of the kind of key phrase was one of the things people keep saying often is like how to control emotion show all everything and if you don't have any emotion and i think that's the wrong mindset to adopt like i've heard i've, I've learned really early in my training that the best way to deal with emotion was not to control them but to deal with them and to do something with them and on that how do you control the emotion or what should you do you cannot eliminate emotion for sure they're always going to be there so 
I think when it comes to emotions, um, the old you need to suppress your emotions and you need to be like a robot doesn't apply anymore. There has been so much research now and I think the trading world has caught up on that as well. Um, I People who, who have been following me for a while know that I'm a big, big supporter of I love my emotions and I use my emotions. Sorry, it's 30 degrees here. I'm so hot. I'm sitting next to my fan, but it's still hot. <laughs> um, so I use my emotions as my um, um, guidance system. I use my emotions to give me feedback. So where you start with your emotions is by looking at what's your emotional soup you are brewing in every day. Is your emotional soup frustration, anger, fear, um, pain, um, despondency, you know, all those to be called below the line emotions. Or is it um, hopefulness, um, determination, grit, um, you know, those emotions that are what we call above the line emotions. Now, if you have below the line emotions, don't get angry, right? Get curious. It's not right or wrong. It's just feedback for us. I have a lot of below the line emotions. You know, I get angry, I get frustrated and, and it's cool, right? I live that out fully. When I'm angry, I'm angry. I don't need to suppress myself unless it's not appropriate. So I believe it's not appropriate to go on Twitter and rant about my mother um, saying something to me. That's something that I would maybe have a conversation with my mom about or my brother. Um, so it's not appropriate, but it's appropriate for me to go on Twitter and saying, crap, I was long the Dow and it was short the Dow and that thing just shot up. Yeah, so uh, it's appropriate as well, appropriateness as well. So um, hello, Arthur. <laughs> um, Arthur from Sydney, I remember. So the um, emotions that you experience when you have the below the line emotions like um, fear, hurt, anger, um, hopelessness, that shows me that you have um, um, a lot of personal um, gaps that you need to address. So um, childhood issues, childhood pain, um, that needs to be completed. So where you maybe um, had experiences in growing up where you were just empowered by your family, where you weren't being made fun of for being emotional or where you're not being taken serious or where your anger was shut down. You know, a lot of parents um, in the past, it has changed so much nowadays. It's, it's, it's really great. But in the past, I remember... Um, it was always like, um, don't don't talk back to your parents. It's like as a child, you were constantly suppressed and shut down. And then you're supposed to be fully expressed in trading. It, it doesn't work, right? So you need to recover those emotions and be able to express anger in a resourceful, healthy way. So for example, my um, um, $100,000 a month trader, uh, trader friend, he he gets angry, but his anger doesn't, impact his decision-making process. So number one, step number one is find out what your emotional soup is. What are the main emotions you experience consistently? Those emotions give you feedback on what you need to work on first. And then when you, when you have moved into a healthier soup of emotions, then you still monitor yourself where you're like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place, um, but I don't like this that doesn't feel good. And then you investigate what is it that needs to be changed around that. I hope that makes sense. Oh yeah, it totally makes sense. And that's, that's also what I did over time is to understand kind of what emotion meant and why I was feeling a certain way, why I was feeling a certain emotion. Yeah. And yeah, you have inside that you can then correct and do something to act on. It's not about saying, well, I felt that way in the past, now I feel this way now. Like, like you said before, before, so you can become better now and you can work on this now. Exactly. Yes. The past leaves clues for where your success yeah. lies. And if you exactly. experience anger, anger is fear. Anger is when people, when the magical big people, you know, your caretakers would exert control over you. And as children, we are not able to, to deal with it, right? We are not able to deal with our emotions. We don't have the language to articulate 
um, when someone is being oppressive or is controlling and, and you know it's being human right everybody has had experiences like this um so that's where often where anger issues come from so someone who experiences anger depending on what kind of anger then i immediately have an idea that they have experienced not being in control when they're in the markets and the market behaves a certain way that fear of not being in control at being at the effect at being at the mercy of gets triggered and it's a form of helplessness and hopelessness it's about helping the trader then to um to move into um understanding that they're adults now that they have the language that they can develop that they can develop the emotional maturity to deal with whatever life throws at them because the reality is life is not always happy you know no matter how much money you have shit always happens you know a friend yeah. of mine there's a bushfire was next to him and his house got burned down it doesn't matter how much money you have it's painful to lose all your memories and to lose your home now he is extremely wealthy so he's kind of lucky because he is not out on the streets and there's other people who didn't have insurance and they have nothing left, nothing. But that's life. And so it's about what you do with it. You come back bigger and faster, like Phoenix out of the ashes. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's a very good reminder. Love it. If you guys got value from this video, just give a like and that would be really appreciated as always. We know kind of what to focus on and what topics you guys like. So give a like on this also. If you have any questions, just comment below. And I had a question about uh, Sasan. Where I am now, I am in Siem Reap, Cambodia, and I just moved here from yesterday. You guys will see the video coming up in the next couple of days about how that happened. Coming here, so give me to ask things. Just comment below, man. Did you have any topic you want to talk about or anything specific people would have to implement like right now? Well, as I said, it would be great to get questions from you guys. Um, so let me just, because I, I can talk for years, you know, it's like, <laughs> Um, so and I just want to, um, Gabriel, yeah. you say you would like to be in a van, and that's the thing, it's a choice. It doesn't sound like a poor choice, it's your freedom of choice that's what matters. It's not you have to be in a van because you don't have the money for uh, a private jet. It's like, I'm just you know going to extremes here uh yeah. you choose to be in a van and you do that yeah. like i chose to be in a tent and to backpack up um machu picchu because i love nature i love being in nature i love living it rough but i also have yeah. the choice to be um in a different um environment oh yeah and one of the topic which i which i thought about and this is something i got by question both time about the issue of missing out how should first of all what does that mean the fear of missing out and how to deal with it should they like do something specific or i don't know yeah so i actually <laughs> I, I wrote like a 10 page article on that it's the fear of missing out yeah. it's this over overarching um a word or name for a lot of stuff that's happening underneath kind of like what i said with with um fear before that um it's not like um the the fear of not being able to live life to the fullest is uh, has subcategories of all the other fears not being good enough um, not being lovable not belonging and so on right that's like human survival fears um but when it comes to fear of missing out that fear is has subcategories as well because the fear of missing out is just an end result the fear of missing out is what we usually describe when we jump into the market jump into a trade when we see everyone else succeeding and then we are not what does that say about ourselves number one that we don't trust ourselves enough so fear of missing out always for me comes back to lack of trust in yourself and when you have the fear of missing out i would like you to investigate for the next week how many promises do you keep to yourself so when you say i'm going to get up every morning at five o'clock to, to go for a run do you give up after two times if you do that will 
accelerate your lack of trust in yourself and that will fuel your fear of missing out and that will um, make you uh, behave in trading um, in an impulsive, compulsive manner because you can't trust yourself. So what I have done is, because, um, you know, it's, it's a human thing, fear of missing out. It's, it's normal. But what I've done is I have, I know myself really, really well. I know when that old familiar feeling of um, impulsiveness or compulsiveness creeps up and I do several things. I'm like, wow, I'm getting curious. Where is that coming from? What in my life is out of balance that I have this, I need to jump on this train and it was really interesting. Um, someone asked me how I feel about Bitcoin. You know, I have missed out on all those amazing profits. It's like, nah, no emotional reaction, no fear of missing out at all. Why? Because I know I can make as much money or more in the DAX. I don't need a 100% move to make my profits. I can make the same amount of profits on a 2% move because I know my skill, right? So that's why the fear of missing out is often a lack of self-trust. It's often something that newer traders experience because they haven't honed their skills yet. And, um, and every time this old familiar feeling creeps up, I look back at my past and I say, I've been trading for 15, over 15 years. The market has given me opportunities every single day. So I can just chill out and um, keep doing my thing. If I miss this, that's fine. I don't care. It's the same with the property market. I know in, in, in um, Canada, the same as Australia, the property market has gone ballistic. Slide, like, wow, I didn't buy property because I don't like property as much. Um, I, I had a lot of properties and I built a, quite a big property portfolio and um, I, I moved myself out of that because I don't like property. Do I have the fear of missing out? No. So why would I have the fear of missing out when the DAX does some crazy stuff? When I look at gold, I don't have the feeling of missing out either. So you can see, you can take your fear of missing out. So that's how you deal with it. You put it into context. Let's say you trade the euro. I know the euro did some crazy moves and um, you have this emotional reaction to it. Look at another, look at platinum or something that moved and ask yourself if you have the same reaction and why not. So put that fear of missing out in context and also deal with your emotional stuff because that again is feedback that on some level you feel like you're not enough. On some level there's something for you to learn. Yeah, fear of losing is killing your trading even though your trades are 80% right. Um, that's a really great comment and well done for acknowledging that. Um, so I suspect that you don't follow through on your stop losses. That's kind of like, um, how do you follow through on the promises you give to yourself and others? I suspect not so well. Yeah. Or in that case, I guess it could be either not following through on the stop loss or to take profit, which means you could close the trade really, really early. Because you feel like, yeah. oh, I've been losing the past five trades. So let me close that one quick so I don't have a loss. Yeah. That could be possible too. So. Really good point. But it's, it's either one of, the, of these for sure. It's best, no other option. It's best in your training, Etienne? uh yeah we yeah of course we covered that like always respecting the plan yeah. so for sure no because it, yeah. yeah because what i suggest best is that your risk and money management numbers don't stack up um there's maybe some work to be done there and then also yeah. learning how to follow them um yeah. i see that a lot that you know i get traders that say i have emotional challenges to take my losses and then when we actually drill down into the emotional challenges which are there right we work on them but the other bit that's missing is the practical, your risk management plan does not, does not stack up. So I work with someone, her um, risk management was, I don't know, it was the two to one, right? So she said, I, no, it was even, it was even worse. It was like, she wanted to go for a 15 point profit, a tick profit, pip profit, and a 10 pip loss. She was working, she was trading the, um, 6e the the euro on on futures which is i think ten dollars per point or so or you know, something along those lines so um but then she would say i put my stop loss two pips underneath a certain level and it's like they don't work together those two 
um, those two strategies. If you want to put your stop loss two pips underneath and want to have this kind of risk reward, mathematically, geometrically, based on charts, impossible. <laughs> so yeah. um, maybe some work to be done there. Yeah. And we have some really great questions, which we'll get to, but just to get mm -hmm. back on the topic of uh, fear of losing. Yeah, so Bas says he cannot hold the winner. And th that's something I've, awesome. I've also had a problem with before. So what you want to do is you want to find out what's going to be like your, your goal or your vision, what you're, what you're trading. And then every time you don't respect your, like your winning or take profit rule, it's kind of a step back. So you're kind of going backward, which why would you want to do it, right? So if you see yourself with your vision and you just do that, and you tell yourself all the time that you're just going backward whenever you close a trade too early. It's going to be simple to pretty quickly get back on track and, and keep the same take profit. That, that's how I do it, but I don't know if it's the, the right way, but it works. <laughs> um, I, um, I have learned in trading that there is no one right way to do. And every, it's like, it's so many pieces of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's like a million piece puzzle, Etienne. What your experience is, is a piece of the puzzle that will help everyone to, um, to become yeah. more successful. Yeah, it. because it doesn't yeah. apply to everyone. So cool. some, they find it easy to hold on to their winners, but they also hold on to their losers. So they need a different piece of the puzzle. Yeah, exactly. And you might be struggling at some point with holding on to winners or you whatever losers. And then the next week or next month or a year after, it's going to be the opposite. Holding on to your loser, whatever, the other, the other way. So, yeah. But you have to correct all of them, which makes you a better trader after that. Cool. Yeah. So exactly. we had a lot of great question. And I think I want to go on this one from, I think it's part of the academy, possibly. Uh, I have a challenge with AJC when it comes to my trading, although... Uh, so Tassin dealing on, with this, I mostly find myself trying new things all the time. So how do you deal with wanting to try things all the time, like new strategies, I guess, new take profit, new rules, new thing you look at, new indicator. And th that's something I've been <laughs> for sure guilty of in the, in the beginning, for sure. So I can share my way, but maybe Andy, you want to share yours first. Hmm. So here's two things. Number one, I wonder what your personality profile would be. Because if you're on a disk profile, that, that's a very um, typical behavior of a high eye. We call it the shiny thing syndrome, which you're not a high eye. So um, for you, it would be great to hear what your feedback is because that would be very different to what I'm explaining here. So the high eyes, they, they always see something, they get excited. And then they go for that thing. And the reason is because they make mostly decisions based on their feelings. Um, well, they see the new thing, they try it out, it feels good. And then they try it a little more, it doesn't work, it feels bad. They go to the next new thing that feels good. Um, so that could be one, one, one reason. Um, another reason could be that um, you actually don't do the work that needs to be done, meaning that you consume, inhale information. Like um, this trade I was working with who had 10 different trading systems um, that he bought, you know, like, um, God, <laughs> so many, um, but didn't apply any of them. Just studied and read it all and took it all in, but didn't apply it. So never got it to work. And the reason for that is that um, his values, he loves knowledge, he loves learning, but he is not so good at implementing and applying. So I did a lot of work with him on on that skill, implementing and applying. That's kind of like comfort zone, you know, it's, it's so much safer to learn and to study than actually putting your money on the line, which can be very painful. Um, so... Um, so that, that could be a reason. Um, another reason is that you're, um, um, find it hard to focus on one thing. So I would suggest that you do a lot of sports to settle yourself down, that you actually have the peace and the mental agility to, to focus. I would suggest uh, meditating, but if you, if you have ADHD, no chance. So start with mindfulness. 
um, that is that is something really useful, I think. Uh, mindful. I, I found it really hard to meditate as well because uh, I'm very active. Um, I still haven't mastered meditation and I don't intend to, but Steve Ward introduced me to the Mindful Minute and that was the best thing that I ever learned because um, that helped me to become, to settle down, to become self-aware and to stop the franticness of my brain. So the mindful minute is basically that for one minute, you measure the amount of breaths you take. And by the way, Steve Ward is also on Etienne's podcast. Um, so you, you measure the amount of breaths you take. And let's say, so for me, it's about eight. Then wherever I am at the traffic lights, queuing up at the bank, going for a walk, I do my mindful minute by simply focusing on eight breaths. That's all I do, just settling my mind for eight breaths. I can do that for one minute. Can't do it for 10 minutes, but I can do it 10 times eight breaths. So um, that has helped me to gain so much self-awareness in my trading that now that the mental chatter has calmed down, which ADHD people have, the mental chatter has calmed down. I, I'm so in tune with my emotions that, as I said before, I feel the feeling of compulsiveness and impulsiveness creeping up long before it can do any damage. And that's what we do, you know, when we go to the doctor. We don't want to go to the doctor when we, when, when it's too late, when we already are sick. We want to go to the doctor when we feel something is going to come up. And then we want to be preventative rather than trying to fix when it's too late, when it, the damage is done. So um, what's, your, what's your take on that, Etienne? Yeah, so I would much rather trade with the system that's or the strategy or whatever that's average, just producing like bare minimum return, then searching for the perfect thing. And like same thing goes when you buy a car. Like those of you guys who drive or have a car will relate to this. Like let's say you want to take a trip from two places. So you leave from one city, let's say, I don't know, whatever city. So Nam Phan in Cambodia to Siem Reap. Okay, that's simple. So you don't like buy your car and then change it every like 20 kilometers. <laughs> That's stupid. Like, what will do it? So you stick to you buy a car, as long as it's proper, you keep it until you get to your point, and that's the that's the same thing I apply to trading. Same mindset of I would much rather have something average or even bare minimum return if if possible, but stick to it over the long term because I know if I search all the time, I'll get no result. So that's how I see it. Yeah, yeah, I love that analogy with a car. It's so true. And the thing is, you don't buy many cars and put them to your garage unless, you know, some people do, but not many. <laughs> um, you, you take the car and you drive it. So you implement. Love it. Love it. So, Mashuru, what I would recommend you is, because I can relate what you're saying, because I love knowledge. I've got so many books. I've got like a whole room of books, right? The whole library of books. <laughs> And I want to just consume because I love it so much, but it doesn't get me to my goal of making money in the markets. So what I would do is I would um, 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 categorize my day. So this is the studying time, which I love. And then I would take one piece of information and implement that for the, for, for the next two hours and kind of like eased myself into learning how to apply and starting to love it because I guarantee you, once you get the results, you start loving implementation as well. But I don't think you have trained yourself to do that so much. Um, yeah. There's one thing that Alejandro said that I want to just... Um, mm -hmm. yeah, Did you want go to... ahead, go ahead. That, that's what I, I want to jump on, but go ahead. Ah, go okay. Ahead. Um, Alejandro, you said um, just... Put your stop loss and I can't find it now. Uh, put your stop yeah, loss they, they and your trend forget. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's kind of like we all know what to do, but it's the doing what we know that's the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I know when I want to lose weight, don't eat pizza, don't eat cream buns, don't eat chocolate, and eat vegetables and fruits and and go for a run every day. I know that. It's the doing it that's the challenge. So as beautiful as it sounds, um, many many um, have to work on the doing what they know to do. That's where the challenge lies for, for most of the population, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Sasan uh, FX1 mentioned I blocked my account on Wednesday on news trading USD card. I will never do news trading. I, I think like right away, it's, it's not about news trading. That's not a problem because some people I know and Mandy knows trade news and they're very successful. So that's not a problem. I love news. And Mandy, I'll, I'll let you like tackle the problem right here because I know you're going to be able to uh, tackle that. Well, you know, the question is here. Is your belief that no one can succeed in news trading, which Etienne and I can confirm to you? We know traders who do really well just in news trading, and I love trading news. Is your belief that you can't make it work in news trading? Um, then you have a limiting belief around that, and I wonder where else, what other limiting beliefs you have that could be tackled and could be overcome. Um, what is it? If you blew your account, that tells us that you didn't take your stop loss where you needed to take your stop loss uh, because, you know, your stop loss is usually about between 1% and 3%. And if you had taken your stop loss at that point, then you would have been fine. Um, if you blew your account because it, it happened in 30 seconds, that means shows us that your position was too big because even if you have a 130 pip move and it happens in 30 seconds, um, and you blow your account, then you haven't done your risk and money management in such a way because we all know that, yeah, no stop loss, but we all know that trading the news is risky and then you need to adjust your risk accordingly. <laughs> I love pizza, yes. And I love trading news as well. Really good at it. Um, so the So you can see immediately that it's not about stopping to trade news, it's about identifying what was the gap, what is it that you missed out on um, organizing it. You got your lesson, awesome, well done. And also thank you for bringing it up because you're not the only one, Susanna. I tell you that happens a lot. And it's not about that it happens, it's about what do you do with it, how do you fill the gaps. Keep training at it, tr keep trading it, and trading news is the best. Can I just share how I trade the news? It's really easy. Sure, <laughs> so go ahead. Go ahead. I, think I, like I don't it. know what the cat did, right? I, I didn't see the chart. But let's say news happens, right? I look at the one minute chart and then we have a gap up and then it comes down and the one minute turns into a doji or hanging man. So something with a really long wick and then closed and we have a gap here. That's when I go short and put my stop loss above the candle. I can tell you in about 95% um, based on my statistics, it's not something that I pull out of my ideas. Um, it's something that I have statistically um, tested. Can you still hear me? I, uh, can. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that trader, that trade is a winner. And if it is not a winner, my stop loss is above the one minute candle. It's not a big loss, right? <laughs> So, and then I write it down as long as my bar makes lower opens, lower lows, lower opens, lower, sorry, lower opens, lower close, lower opens, lower close until it stops. And usually what happens is I have my Bollinger on as well. It usually comes out of the Bollingers and that's when it starts turning. So that's how I trade the news. Um, Interesting. Um, and the other way around as well to go up. <laughs> like that. Uh, there was a question about uh, so this is GL. Tell us how you get comfortable being uncomfortable in the market, aka uncertainty. I, I think and he, he, here's the problem. Here's like it really depends on what's your definition of being uncomfortable. For me, uncomfortable is when you have no stop loss or you don't know what you're doing. So I'm comfortable with whatever being in a trade that I know I'm supposed to be in. I'm that, that that's comfortable for me. That's not that's not tough. That's simple. But I would not want to be uncomfortable. Because I know if I'm really not comfortable, I'm doing something wrong. So it always depends on the definition of, of that that topic, comfortable versus not comfortable. And kind of what are the things that you've done before as well to, to either calculate your edge or validate your edge or understand what you're doing. Any thoughts on that, Mandy? Um, you know how they say um, success lies outside your comfort zone I, yeah. I, I don't believe that. I believe when you're outside your comfort zone, 
then often you go into fear and then you do stupid things. Well, that's for me. <laughs> and then there's people who thrive on that and they do, they make really good decisions. So there is no one size fits all again, as, as always. Um, what I found with um, um, comfort zone is, and that's solely for my, um, for my behavioral type, I like to expand my comfort zone. I like to be gentle on myself. And again, I know people who are risk takers and they love going outside of the comfort zone. That's how they grow, but they don't freeze. So I, really, well, I want to give you an example. I was being naughty, right? Did the wrong thing. I agree. <laughs> I um, took the train and I thought it's just one stop. I just wanted to go from um, Carnegie to Caulfield, which is a two minute train ride. And I thought, why should I pay four dollars for that train four dollars thirty for that one two minutes so i thought i'd take my chances and didn't take a ticket and of course you know what happens there's these people who control um, the tickets on the platform and random check and i'm like oh no if i had stayed on the train i would have been fine and would have gotten out the next station and would have not get caught could have bought my ticket and make up for it and ask me a culpa right but my brain froze, my brain went blank and I got out of the train for, I don't even know why I was so stupid to get out of the train, into the um, people who control your tickets, well knowing that I didn't get a ticket. So of course I got fined $150, which was painful. That's the kind of personality I am. And I, I don't like it, but you know what? I got to deal with it. So, so Knowing that I also know that I'm going to expand my comfort zone from now on. I'm not going to do that again because yeah. it's not who I am. Whereas I, I had this um, boyfriend once who loved after the movies um, sneak into different movie theaters and he loved it, right? And I was always in fear. So he would most probably be able to perform really well going outside of his comfort zone. Now, expanding your comfort zone is exactly what it sounds to me um, would be useful for you. So when you have fears, um, look at what's the edge of your fear and then go one step beyond that, but not just going mindlessly, like understand what it takes to go beyond that safely. Um, how can you improve 1% today so that going outside of your comfort zone is um, um, not uncomfortable anymore. And everything that's uncomfortable is usually unfamiliar. So what I gave you, the example that I gave you before was being stupid. So, you know, my train experience was stupidity, had nothing to do with being unfamiliar. And that's what you, what I see a lot of traders do. They do stupid things and they blow up their accounts. When you feel something is unfamiliar, which is something like incre in increasing your lot size, that is unfamiliar at the beginning. But that's a very smart thing to do because you want to grow. And even if you stuff it up, it's okay. You take it as feedback and you learn from it to improve and become a better trader every day by a little percentage. So that would mean expanding your comfort zone and making th that which was unfamiliar become familiar. So at the beginning for me to talk in front of people was like unfamiliar, was, you know, I found it hard for you as well, right? And now it's like us having a chat, coffee, you know, glass of wine, all good. <laughs> like driving again, driving was uncomfortable at the beginning because it was unfamiliar and now all yeah. good. And I think that that's a big shift in the in keyword here between uncomfortable and unfamiliar. I think unfamiliar is good. You're not familiar with something. And when you do it, you become better at it. Not comfortable is maybe you're doing something wrong. Maybe you're going too far. And I think that's also a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, there was a question from Mashudu on trading journals. How do you view your trading journals? I think there might be a module on that in the academy. So we won't do it here. We won't do that now. But if I'll, I'll create something on a topic, if there's none, and I'll, uh, I'll try to post in the in the academy as well. Um, aside from personality, yeah, there's a lot of questions that are long to read. So just give us a second and we'll read them. Uh, do hours of hours of backtesting help to deal with fear once you're in the market? 
I think so, to some extent, but when we say long hours, we just mean have enough to validate your edge. If you're doing like a thousand hours of backtesting on one strategy and you just re backtest and re backtest all the time, it's not going to help you that much. So I think it's, it's good to get it like from the start to validate what you're doing and understand the principle. But yeah, Niels got it. Uh, so Niels got it. After that, no, not, not needed at all. So. I think with backtesting, the advantage I like, if you, if you do manual backtesting, by the way, what I like about it is that um, you, you train your brain to, to store patterns. And, um, and then that's where your unconscious, your, um, your intuition can kick in because your brain has seen that pattern before. And you can't remember that, you know, you have seen that pattern before, but your brain remembers um, so you can basically get 10 years of trading experience in, you know, uh, in, in, in a matter of a month, if you keep going backwards, um, through your charts and look at what happened. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. And yeah. here's one trick for like a very long time. I was kind of scheduling pretty much one hour or two hour every week, just to back test, just to kind of test myself manually, see if I would be able to trade right. And that was like on different pairs, different condition or whatever, but just for the fun of it and the, the, the impact it has on you becoming better. So I was putting that every week. Now I don't do it that much, but I still back this sometimes just cause I, it helps me kind of reevaluate re what I do and kind of practice at the same time. If I didn't take that many trades in the last month or so. Can I share my screen, um, Etienne? Yeah, you should be able to do it. Sure. I just want to show like an example of how I would trade um, the news. Um, e, this one. So let's suppose, and I don't know if that was news or not, right? But just as an example, let's, so that's the one minute on the cat. Let's suppose that was the news. It went all the way down, came all the way back. And can you see how it's outside the Bollinger? Then I would go long yeah. and put my stop loss underneath here. And then you can see, um, well, that's, that's not quite open higher, but um, you can see here open higher, close higher, open higher, close higher, open higher, close the same. So I'm still cool. Open higher, still in the range, still open higher, open higher, open higher. And can you see here it's outside the Bollinger and it's starting to have a red candle? I would be out. Or um, uh, because I have, um, usually I have my screen set up with um, four or five time frames. Then I would look at um, what my um, higher time frame says. So let me try to. Um, shapes. Try to see if I can make it work. So then I look at if my higher time frame has a bullish pattern. I hear. So that was that was the um, one minute I would have gotten out here, right? But now look at the five minute. The five minute has a um, uh, bullish engulfing, and then I'm like, hmm. Actually, I want to stay in this one because now the five minutes still shows bullish. And then let's say, look at the 15 minute. Okay. This is by the way, not trading advice. <laughs> yeah, always do your own research anyway. That's, that's always the, the best thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not licensed. I always say I'm qualified, but not licensed. <laughs> ah, here it is. So see, that's the 15 minute. The 15 minute went through the middle Bollinger and was still okay. But the 15 minute then here started to show weakness and then started to roll over. So you, that's, that's how I uh, would trade. Oh, look at this one. That's amazing. <laughs> that was news announcement, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so, so how would you place a stop loss on something like this? Would you just put it below the low of the candlestick, or how would that work? Uh, just below the low of the candlestick, yeah. So okay. if I go back, if I find it again, and also um, remembering the spread, right? Mm -hmm. So because the spread will be reddened, then where was it? So 
So I don't mind um, skipping through the charts like that because I trust my brain to take in all the patterns without me actively doing anything. Okay, I can't find it, but you you get the like if it had been yeah. this one, oh, that would be my favorite setup. Doji well, outside the setup also, yeah. <laughs> put it right, <laughs> great, right after move down. Uh -huh. And then put just your stop loss for maybe here, just because um, to give room for the spread. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Usually, if it rolls over and starts taking out this one, it has failed. So yeah. But yeah. see, the interesting thing is that I would not take no setup. Like after a big down move, unless it's at a major zone, I would not trade that, which is interesting. Because yeah, the different only, personalities. The, the only, yeah. If I was to trade that, I would get maybe a 20% win rate, and that wouldn't be enough to make money. So, yeah. But perhaps with the news, you can, yeah, you can make it work. I don't know. That's the thing, you know, um, I've seen some crazy stuff how traders work that I could never make work and they yeah. can't work what I make work. So um, interesting. is like, that the one that you meant, um, Susan? That's that's crazy. That's crazy stuff. Probably the one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can see I wouldn't have traded that because it didn't. What I needed it to do would be to to gap up, come down and then have a dodgy here. But this one is just a mess. It's no entry for me. Yeah. And uh, I'm yeah, going to guess <laughs> that in, in both cases, in, on, on something, I guess, if you go long or short, you'll be stopped out <laughs> pretty much. So yeah, exactly. They did a good job. No much, no much possibility, yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> also, if you had been long, yeah. Again, that's the one minute. You could have easily gotten out here. But you know, in hindsight, it's always easy to say, the sun, mm -hmm. I have been caught up in moves where I froze and did not get out, and then was like, oh man, you know, what did I do? Why did I get out? And then you have a bigger loss than you wanted. And then whole, whole mind chatter starts, and then you start fighting for it. And it's like, if it goes back into that amount of loss, then I take my loss. And of course, it doesn't. It gets worse and worse and worse. So I totally get it, Sasan. And it's also training and practicing. And every athlete in sports and every trader has done stupid stuff. So don't be too hard on yourself. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> and the first thing I want you guys to take with Mandy's advice on that, it's, it's, it's not about looking at what she's doing and doing the same thing. Because that's not going to work. That's not going to be possible to make money with that. So you always want to test whatever you do. And really be sure that what you do is like tested by yourself. Because... The only way to feel to feel really confident and to understand what you're doing is to test it yourself and see everything yourself. Otherwise, it's never going to work. You cannot just yeah. look at the strategy and see it from somewhere online and try it out. It's not going to work. So, but keep in mind, this is really good advice. You just have to do your due diligence before you go in the market and trade this live, for sure. And so, Sun, only move on once you have found peace in it. Don't brush it aside. You know, the worst thing that I, a friend of mine. Uh, her mother died and and she was grieving right she was she was taking care of her she was very sick she was her primary caretaker and now is this mother shaped hole in her life and people say remember the good things about your mom they try to you know positive psychology and all i can say sorry it's like fuck off because people have to go through grief and positive psychology is not appropriate in that case. Let her grieve, let her go through the pain, and the day will come and she can pick herself up again and start looking at the bright side of life. And so it's the same with your traits, Hassan. Don't, don't try to be a hero and to say it's all good because it hurts, you know, and it has an impact. And we start doubting ourselves when we do stupid things. Um, it's normal and really make sure that you find peace in the trade, that you get your learnings. That's what actually peace is. When you understand, oh, this is what went wrong. This is how I could have done it better. Then the fear goes away because now you don't feel out of control anymore. You feel like, all right, so next time that happens, I actually know what to do. Like my stupid train ride. It's like next time I'm not doing that again. Um, so... Um, and then you move on, okay? Yeah, powerful. Guys, I, I think we'll wrap it up because we're already almost like an hour and a half into it or a oh, little bit wow, than an okay. hour. 
So, uh, GL, no, I don't use stick chart, only candlestick. No. For myself, Me neither. Like, I think only uses candlestick. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, I use, I do have the letter though, the price letter, which, you know, is, is a little bit different. So I do read flow um, as well, which is not obviously not on Pepperstone. <laughs> but, yeah. um, cool. Cool. If you guys have some value with that video, just give it a like, or and if you're watching the replay comments, if you have any question, we'll do our best to answer and our best to help. And uh, we'll catch you guys maybe in a couple of days or there's videos as always, like every single day or every, yeah, for, for me on the channel. See how it went from Numpen to Siemri pretty soon. That was a tough ride. We'll check it out. <laughs> Come on, and you I'll, had I'll, I'll had Wi-Fi on the bus. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, you guys will see. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys pretty soon. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.